Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am talking about Ubby Dubby and how to prepare for the 2020 festival. For those that don't know me, my name is Aid. I'm a music festival content creator. I blog and vlog all about going to music festivals. I have been doing this for two years now and so I do a lot of how to prepare videos to get you guys excited and ready for the festival. Ubby Dubby is a two-day festival here in Texas. I went to it last year, so I wanted to do a video for you guys to get you guys excited, get you guys ready. It's gonna be on April 18th through the 19th um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's in like Arlington, which is basically in between Dallas and Fort Worth. So today's video is just gonna cover everything that you need to know about the festival, from tickets to where to stay, how to get there the lineup, all that good stuff. And if you guys have not gotten tickets, I am an ambassador for Ubby Dubby, so you can use Vibe with Aid to get a little discount on your tickets. I think it saves you about five bucks, you know? Every penny counts when you're going from festival to festival. And I really try to put this content together for you guys to really help you guys out. So feel free to use my code, Vibe with Aid, to save on your tickets if you haven't gotten them yet. If you are new here, I'd love it if you subscribe to join the little Vibe Tribe and hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on anything. I've been a little slow getting my 2020 content going, but I am so excited for what I have planned for this year. So I'd love it if you join the fam and what not. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. First off, like I said, I went to Ubby Dubby last year. So what I will link down below for you guys are the vlogs from day one and day two of last year, as well as my review of last year. I honestly had a lot of great fun at Ubby Dubby. I think it was my first festival of the year. I went to Holy Ship for the first time last year and that was in January. And then I had this huge break. So Ubby Dubby was my first festival for the 2019 festival season. It was a really great start, I thought, to the festival season. It did have some hiccups with the venue that they had utilized, but this year that they did announce that they would be using a different venue. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens with that new venue that they are going to be utilizing and whatnot. And there's always like a little bit of a curveball, I feel like, whenever a new venue happens, but not to worry. I think you will have a great time regardless. I love the Texas fan. They are so amazing. It's such a good vibe and good energy to go to Texas festivals because everyone's just really friendly. And I've heard friends that come and visit me in Texas or they go to Texas festivals and they say nothing but nice things about the crowd. So what to expect is that you're gonna have a great time regardless and this lineup is so stacked. So I just wanted to kind of cover some other tips to help you guys feel prepared and ready to go and it's gonna be an awesome weekend for sure. Just to let you guys know, I will sadly not be at Ubby Dubby and it like breaks my heart. <laughs> I think this will be my first Texas festival I'm missing, which is so crazy to me because I've been going to them for like two years now since I moved to Austin. So I will not be there sadly. So rage in my honor for me. I will be at Coachella weekend two. All of my friends that I festival with, they really wanted to go to Coachella. And so I was like, if they're all going, like I have to go, you know what I mean? And Ryan's never been. So I will be festivaling in spirit with you guys because I will be at Coachella, but my heart will be at Ubby Dubby with you guys. So I will sadly not be there. First thing I think is always just a good general rule of thumb with any festival that you guys go to, you should look at the website and just read everything on the website. Cause I can give a lot of like more of those, like this is what's actually gonna happen kind of tips or just kind of those things that I've learned throughout the years of going to festivals. But just to get like a general idea of everything about the festival, I read the website beginning to end every single page just so I know what's up. Some of the rules, what the hours are, things like that. Just so you have that general base knowledge I think is really good and then my tips can kind of just take your experience to the next level, you know what I'm saying? If you haven't gotten your tickets, I highly recommend getting on that as soon as possible. I think they just extended tier two pricing, but probably by the time this video goes up, they're either extending pricing or pricing's gonna change. The tiers are going pretty quickly, like it's only January and they're already about to go to tier three pricing. So I would just recommend getting on it. They did sell out of Ubby Dubby, I think the day of, and Freaky Deaky sold out way before Freaky Deaky even happened. So I would just get on it as soon as possible and get your tickets. Like I said, you can use Vibe with A to get a little discount off your tickets and it helps me out as an ambassador. That way I can maybe do giveaways for tickets and things like that. So I will link my ticket link down below and I would appreciate it if you used it. No worries if not. There are three ticket types. So there's GA, which is like your most basic ticket. It gets you access to the festival. It's the cheapest option. I do GA basically all the time. 
Then they added GA Plus recently. I think they added it last year. It is basically just an express entry. So if you don't like waiting in lines, if you're the type that goes at peak times and you hate waiting in lines, then it might be best to pay for GA Plus um, so you get that expedited entry. And then there's VIP. And so I had never done VIP at a Disco Donnie event before until Freaky Deaky last year. And honestly, like, VIP is really worth it if you can afford it and you can budget for it. I really liked VIP at Freaky Deaky and I imagine for Ubby Dubby it'd be about the same. You get a separate entry line and so that line is usually not as busy. You get separate bathrooms that are air conditioned and are like functioning toilets, toilet paper, someone's cleaning them always. I really liked it especially because it was really muddy and so the porta potties were so muddy for general admission, but in VIP, it was like not muddy at all. It was perfect. The viewing area by main stage was super cool. And the one at the base stage was also awesome. If that is something that you're looking into and if it's your budget and all that could be something good to try out. So like I mentioned, this venue is at a newer venue. It's called Global Life Park. It's a baseball park and it's in Arlington, which is basically in between Dallas and Fort Worth. I've never been to this venue. I've never even heard of people having festivals at this venue. I did have a follower of mine message me, I think on Instagram, asking me my thoughts about the venue, if it's gonna be inside the baseball park or outside. And judging by like a baseball park just in general, I don't imagine that they're gonna cram all the stages onto the field and I don't think that the baseball team would want to have their field ruined by a bunch of people going to a festival. So I imagine, and I was looking at the map of this place, that it's going to be on the outside, either in this grassy area that's kind of like near a creek, or it's in like the big parking lot. I feel like they're going to use the outer area of that. That's what they did for Freaky Deaky, because Freaky Deaky was at a raceway park. So it was a really small race track, and it wasn't actually in the race track. It was like outside of it in like the open area and the parking lots and like stuff like that. So I imagine that might be what the case is with Ubby Dubby. Well, it'll be interesting to see when the map comes out. With this new venue, I did look up kind of what your hotel and Airbnb options are. I did make a blog post for Ubby Dubby. So I do have a website, vibewith8.com, and I will link that blog post down below just so you can kind of see what your prices are. The closer you get to the stadium, the more expensive it is. And then the farther away you get, the cheaper it is on a per night basis. One thing to think about is the farther away you are, yes, it's cheaper, but you might be paying more, say, in gas money or Ubering and things like that. So if you're able to split, say, with your friends, then it might work out better where you can just split the room if it's a bigger room and whatnot. So that's just something to think about. I prefer to be closer to the venue just so I'm not having to pay a whole lot in Uber or if we're able to walk to the venue, like that's always really nice so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But just do what works best for you and your group. I would book as soon as possible because things are gonna start booking as the event is getting closer and closer. With hotels, you can just reserve it and you don't have to pay until you like get there. I book through Expedia normally. Um, and that's always worked out really well for me. Moving on, how to get there and back, how to get to and from the festival. So this has always kind of been a challenge for Disco Donny events if you go to them a lot. Especially with a new venue, there can be some challenges getting there and going back because I feel like the traffic patterns or like whatever is still kind of like getting sorted out as they're figuring out this new venue and whatnot. So my recommendation always is that whether you are going to drive and park Parking is usually about like 20 bucks a day. So if you have like a full car, you guys can all split that. We always drive to Disco Donnie, but I know people fly in for these kinds of things, but we always drive and that's always worked really well for us. So that's one option. The other option is taking Ubers and Lyfts. I think with whatever option that you are going to do, just leave early. So try to get to the venue early, try to get there when doors open or at least get there like a little bit after doors open just so you're not having to deal with the traffic getting into the venue and you can just get all situated, have a smooth process, and then you get a lay of the land of the venue and everything like that and you get all situated. I always try and go early just because I wanna get my pictures, maybe there's someone early that I wanna see because I've seen so many of the headliners by now that a lot of the newer artists excite me and they usually play when like doors open. Security is really easy most of the time when you go early 
and you're not having to deal with like peak traffic times for security. And then getting home. We all know getting home can be a struggle sometimes, whether you're driving or whether you're taking an Uber or a Lyft. Sometimes you're gonna be stranded for like one to two to three hours. For all the people that have had that happen to them for like Freaky Deaky or Ubby Dubby this past year where they had all these issues where they didn't leave for like another three hours or they had crazy surge times or they had to hitchhike to get home. We always leave early and it sucks, especially if you really like the main headliner. But for us, we just would rather get home at a decent time and get to bed. So we leave early. We leave about 15 to 30 minutes, probably before the end time and we just get out of there and we're on our merry way. We don't really deal with any lines trying to get out. So if you are someone that does not want to be stuck in a parking lot for like three or four hours or you don't wanna to have to hitchhike to get home or like stuff like that, then I highly, highly recommend just leaving a little early. We do 15 to 30 minutes, but even just getting a head start like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like you'll be good to go. If they have any after parties, like you can just leave the festival early and just go straight to the after party, you know? And some of them they might have on site. They had them on site for Freaky Deaky and they, I think they had it nearby for Ubby Dubby last year. So I guess it'll just depend this year where they can have those after parties. But if you wanna just leave a little early, get out of the traffic and everything and then go straight to the after party like that works too because it is going to be on a saturday night that first night so like and i think the festival ends around 10 p.m so everyone that's like going out in dfw area like they're all calling ubers to go out you guys are just trying to get home so it might just help just to give you guys that little bit of buffer room to try and some questions about the weather what the weather is going to be like now that it's at a new venue it's still going to be in the dfw area it's still going to be in texas so what i always say is just be prepared for anything texas has had not the best luck with festival weather in the past year from Ubby Dubby day one had a random thunderstorm evacuation. ACL had like a random cold tundra weekend too. It was Deaky Deaky got rain right before, so it was super muddy and everything again. We just have sporadic weather here in Texas, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Last year, I was watching my vlogs from day one and day two, and I just would not stop talking about how hot it was. And on day one, there was like no breeze coming through, so it was pretty hot. And then we got a random like thunderstorm out of nowhere that night, and we were not prepared for that. And then day two, it was hot again, but there was more of a wind that day. It was more windy. You can hear the wind in my clips. So that was the weather. And then I don't think it really cooled down that much to where like you would need to bring a jacket. But if you have like a pashmina or something and you get cold pretty easily, you can just use that kind of as a jacket. Especially if you're coming from out of state, just kind of have some options in case all of a sudden Texas weather just like turns <laughs> for some reason. So just be watching the weather in the days leading up and then when you're packing, just bring some options in case there might be rain, in case it might be cold, whatever it may be. It's just easier to just be prepared for that kind of weather. So that I feel like is all of kind of like the nitty gritty information that you might need to know. Let me know if you guys have any questions and comment them down below. I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about the lineup, my recommendations for the lineup, and then some general tips for you guys, and then we'll be done. This lineup, oh, this lineup is so good. Oh, I was texting Emma Capotis about it, and we were just like freaking out about it, and I was like so sad because I won't be there, but it's such a good lineup, which means a lot of the time, there's overlap between Ubby Dubby and Freaky Deaky, so a lot of the time, some of the names that are on the Ubby Dubby lineup might come back for Freaky Deaky, which is really exciting because some of the names on here are so, so awesome. And I was trying to like list out the ones that I like wanted to recommend to you guys and it ended up being like almost the entire lineup. I'm just gonna list off some of the ones that I really like. Adventure Club, I haven't seen them in so long, but they just like, they take me back. I saw them Decadence 2015, so it just reminds me of like my first like real rave. Ugh, the memes. Atlians is a really good dubstep bass duo. They're super awesome. Bruno Ferlan, I saw at Dirty Bird Camp Out, and he went back to back with DJ Glenn, and it's just like house, groovy house, vibey house, like so good. Camel Fat is like your tech house duo. They're so amazing. I saw Camel Fat for the first time at Freaky Deaky two years ago. 
they just like it's a vibe it is a vibe and if they're at nighttime in the zoom room stage if that stage is coming back zoom room stage whoo, we love it destructo so destructo is having a all my friends takeover so i imagine he'll be on that stage with like kyle watson dom dalla yeah so he'll be having a stage takeover which is super awesome dom dalla who i love i saw him at seismic dance event he is definitely one to watch i think in the house genre gammer so i'm not really that into um hard style but he's like a happy hardcore kind of. I don't know. I might be butchering that, but he's really awesome. High energy set. Green Velvet. We love him. Tech House. All about it. Griffin is having a DJ set. That's always super cool. So when he does his live sets, it's all with like instruments and stuff. And then his DJ set, he just like mixes like his songs. And then it's interesting to see what other songs he kind of brings into his set. So I'd be really interested to see how that went. Io, he's definitely on the rise. He like blew up last year. He's techno. Millennium, <laughs> all the fields. I wonder if that's gonna be in a sunset. It doesn't say, sometimes it says, so I'd be interested to see how his set would be. Enzo is on my list to see this year. I don't know when I'm gonna see him. I don't know how I'm gonna see him, but I was really sad to see him on this lineup. But I'm hoping, just hoping, maybe he's going to be on the Doolab or Heineken House lineup for Coachella. I wouldn't be surprised because he's so good. And then we have Joyride. Joyride is always a good time. Justin J. Kayvon is also on my must-see list to see this year. So I was also sad about that. But again, hoping he might be at Coachella or on another lineup coming soon. Cascade. King. Kyle Watson, who's gonna be at Coachella. I'm gonna get to see him for the first time at Coachella. I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys see him. I feel like he slept on, but he's so good. Liquid Stranger is having a Wakan takeover, so there's a couple of artists. All the ones that I'm about to name off, I think will be on that takeover. So like Liquid Stranger, Ellis Dream, Lucy, those are all ones I've been wanting to see. Mersive, I talked about Mersive in my Lightning in a Bottle lineup video. I really want to see him at Lightning in a Bottle. Done collabs with like Bass Nectar and stuff like that. Noisy, oh my man. Ugh. I was really sad about this, but Noisy's coming in like February. I think Ryan and I have tickets. It's like February 23rd or something. So we'll be there and I'm excited about it. Rusko's a really good bass artist. Seven Lions, we all know we love Seven Lions. So good. Shiba San is really good. Another tech house. Tiga, I've never seen Tiga on like a Disco Donnie lineup, so I was really pumped about that. Tiga's like tech house, really good. If you know that, let's go dancing. I wanna go dancing with you all night dancing. That's him. Yeah, I did double check. He also had the song Bugatti. If you've heard this song. What are you driving? I said, Bugatti. I have no idea. I know Jaws has a remix of this song. <laughs> I did not know that. Valentino Khan, Vanessa, my girl, house music, queen. She is definitely gonna blow up this year. She's also playing Coachella, which is super dope. Whipped Cream, another woman bass artist that just kills it. I am seeing, she's gonna be at Coachella as well. Oh, excited. So yeah, I basically just list off like the whole lineup. So good luck to everyone going. I can't imagine what these conflicts are gonna be like. I was texting Emma, cause I think Emma might be making it to LBW and I was like, good luck with those conflicts. But she's gonna have such a good time if she ends up going. Like this is a very Emma lineup, I feel like. I feel like it's a really good diverse lineup. And then finally, some general tips. So I have a ton, ton, of videos on my channel that you guys can go check out like how to prepare for your first festival how to go to a festival alone what to bring to a festival I have so much I a lot so you can binge through all of that stuff but I did just kind of want to do some general like re good reminders in case this is gonna be your first festival like what do you need to know what's the tea sis make sure you double check the website to make sure you're not bringing anything that's not allowed just always good just to double check that you don't bring anything and then you don't have any issues at security and whatnot with that being said I always recommend bring something to stay hydrated with whether that's a hydration pack or a reusable water bottle of some sort because we love staying hydrated you're gonna be dancing a lot walking a lot exerting so much energy so it's just important to stay hydrated and I use vibration that is my go-to hydration pack and you can use a BWA tribe so vibe with a tribe just abbreviated 
you can use that for 10% off. I have like two liter ones and I have 1.5 liter ones. I have a whole IGTV about my like vibration collection that you can get more info about it. Or you can just bring a reusable water bottle. You can buy a water bottle there and refill it. They do have free water filling stations. So that is like the most important on top of having like your ID, your wallet, cash, your ticket, make sure you have all that squared away. Other stuff to bring that's also important are earplugs. So I always tell people no matter what part of the stage you are standing at, you need to be wearing earplugs. Best way to protect your ears because you don't want to get like tinnitus where you just constantly hear ringing in your ears. So protect your ears. I get mine from Zound Earplugs. They're really just the best ones that I've ever tried. And they do have little carriers now or like a necklace now where that way you don't lose your earplugs because I'm very guilty of losing my earplugs all the time. You can use Vibe with 8 to get a discount at Zound Earplugs. They're the best. I love them. I have so many pairs and they're just really top notch quality earplugs. And then you have like gum and chapstick. If you trade candy, this is a festival that is candy friendly. Everyone is always decked out in candy. So be sure to bring some to trade and whatnot. And then you can bring stuff like a fan would be really awesome to have just because it does get hot or like a squirt bottle or something to keep cool maybe wear a hat I think bucket hats are like on the rise this year I low-key want to get a bucket hat <laughs> we'll see and then a pashmina is always a good thing to bring a lot of people also bring like wet wipes and hand sanitizer and stuff for the bathrooms just in case you never know always gonna be prepared or like Kleenex in case they're out of toilet paper and stuff like that you just never know that's all like the kind of stuff that like you uh, should bring and some of that stuff that I said towards the end is like nice to bring you don't have to like when I went to my first festival I just had a fanny pack and gum and my phone and my wallet in it that's it and then over the years I've just like been bringing more and more and I think now I'm kind of like scaling it back again just because it's been hurting my back to have like so much stuff in my bag. So I am think I'm like scaling it back. <laughs> what to wear. So I am going to be coming out with a 2020 lookbook video. I did one last year for festival season. It was like what to wear to EDC Ultra. It was just all packaged into one. So that video will be coming out soon just to give you guys some inspiration. I have a ton of fashion videos all in a playlist. If you guys just want to get some general ideas, you can see what I wore last year in the vlogs. Everyone dress pretty ravey typical kind of like festival wear that you would normally see just as like a general tip you can just like look through that stuff but wear what you're going to be comfortable in double check the weather wear comfortable shoes for sure because it's going to be a lot of walking dancing all that stuff so that's always super important to have and then you can add glitter accessories things like that so i have a ton of videos about just like festival fashion and things that i've worn in the past so definitely go check those out and if you have any questions if you want to know like where i shop for certain things or if you just want an opinion on an outfit, you can always just shoot me a DM on Instagram. I respond to all my Instagram DMs, so you can just reach out to me there or send me an email. Hey boys, I'm so sorry. I wasn't talking to you boys. Um, Emma Capotis has a really good video for men's fashion if you guys are looking at what to wear. Definitely go check out that video. I will link it down below. Be kind to everyone. Say excuse me. Wear deodorant wear deodorant please be kind is just like a super important one being kind to everyone around you you never know what people are going through and people are just there to have a good time and to let loose and whatnot so just be kind to everyone you meet and if lines are really long or whatever someone's being rude just remove yourself from those bad vibes and just enjoy the time with your friends enjoy the time with yourself like we pay so much money to go to these things so it just helps to be kind to everyone you can make someone's day just by being nice to them like they're just trying to have a good time so do what you can to just be kind to everyone you meet make sure you take some breaks every now and then it's always good to just sit to stretch chill out i always tell everyone please eat <laughs> Please eat some food. Make sure that you are fueling your body. Your body is just like overexerting itself just to be at this festival and dance. And it's doing so much work just to make sure that you're having a good time. So make sure you're fueling it. Even if it's like with chicken tenders, some French fries, whatever it may be, like just make sure that you eat some food and your body will thank you for it. I've been going to so many festivals for so long. And I feel like when I first went to festivals, I was not eating enough. And because I am dating my boyfriend, Ryan, who needs to eat like every two hours, I've been eating a lot more and it's helped my festival 
mobile game so much. Like I don't crash out by the end of the night. I have so much energy just to go through the rest of the night. Food is fuel. It's your energy. It's the way you survive. So just make sure that you are eating. Please just eat. And then my final one, I'm not condoning drug usage by any means. But however, if you do partake in any of that kind of stuff, make sure you test your stuff. Um, get a test kit. It's so much out there getting laced with things that are not supposed to be getting laced or mixed with and whatever and i would not want anything to happen to any of you guys so just make sure that you are taking the safety precautions that are necessary also if any of your friends or anyone that you see needs to go to the medic take them to the medic just take care of yourself take care of others there's so many times i hear like i didn't want to go to medic because i was scared something would happen to me and that's not the case a lot of the time they're just wanting to make sure that you're safe so you're not going to get in trouble when you do that kind of stuff and you're looking out for others and i remember hearing at like lights all night one of my friends was like someone just asked me if like they should take their friend to the medic because they like think they need to go to the medic and i'm like yeah like you should like if your friend is saying like i think i need to go to the medic you need to take them to the medic like what <laughs> no set no artist like nothing is more important than other people's safety and your safety so please 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 just look out for each other take care of each other all that good stuff another thing i just thought of to avoid pickpocketers and people that steal stuff is to make sure that you're not keeping any important items really on in your pockets and just keep it in a bag whether you have a fanny pack close to you you wear like a crossbody or you have your hydration pack. I just do a bunch of things just to protect myself and I double check where my stuff is probably every hour just because you never know. And I would rather be constantly checking that stuff. That way I can identify at what point I might've lost my stuff. All these tips just keep on coming to me. Um, cell phone service. I don't know what the service will be like at this venue, so it'll be interesting. Just make sure you timestamp your text messages to your friends. And the trick that I always tell people is to make sure you turn off like iMessage and you turn off all cellular data. So if you have an iPhone, what I'll do is I will go to cellular and I'll just turn off all the data on my app so my phone's not working to try and like load my apps or anything. I will go to um, messages and I will turn iMessage off. And then when I get back to the hotel or whatever, I'll turn it back on. Your phone battery lasts and everything like that. I think that's it. <laughs> Like I said, I have so many videos and so many resources on my website, vibewitha.com. With tons of tips and whatnot, but if you guys do have any questions, just comment them down below. And I think that's it for this video. If you did like it, please do give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to join the Vibe Tribe. And if you are going to Ubby Dubby, I am seriously so excited for you. You're gonna have an awesome time. Like I said, if you have any questions or anything you wanna know about the experience, I have my videos from last year and I'm happy to help out with any questions. I really wish I was going. It's so weird that I won't be there with my Texas fam. I hope you guys have an awesome time. Don't forget to use Vibe with Aid on your tickets if you have not gotten them. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.